What's going on, YouTube? So neither the Honda Accord or Toyota Camry really need an introduction, because chances are everyone watching this video either owns one or at least knows someone who owns one. They have been locked in an intense battle over the hearts of American families since the 80s. And for 2021, that fight continues as both just received extensive refreshes within weeks of each other. So with the new updates to styling, technology, and features, which of these two is now on top? Let's go ahead and find out. Alright, so as always, let's start off by establishing the pricing and equipment. Since the vast majority of consumers choose the middle trim levels of these two vehicles, that's what we'll be using today. For the refresh Camry, that's going to be the SE with convenience package and a couple other options. After destination, the total rings in at $30,227. Now for the Accord, we picked the new Sport SE trim level. It starts out a little more expensive, but the only option to add is the extra cost white paint and the destination charge. All told, its final price is an extremely similar $30,070. The first things to check out are their updated exterior designs, where both models keep the changes to the styling very subtle. The grills have both been upsized slightly this year, and the lower elements are also revised to look a bit more aggressive. But overall, nothing that is going to change your existing opinions about the front design. However, the Accord does get an update to the headlights that helps quite a bit, because fully LED lights are now included even on this affordable model. By comparison, the Camry's headlights are also LED, but all the rest of the elements are incandescent. And in addition to that, only the Accord has LED fog lights. As far as the side and back designs, there are even fewer changes. The Camry smoked the partially LED taillights, and the Accord added a black lip spoiler. But the only scorable difference is that the Accord has 19-inch alloy wheels versus 18s in the Camry. Now heading on to some of the other features, only the Accord has heated mirrors, but only the Camry has blind spot monitoring at this price point. Beyond BSM, both models include all the rest of their active safety features as standard equipment. Included within that are full speed adaptive cruise control systems, automatic high beam headlights, lane keeping assist, and automatic emergency braking systems. Finally, when it comes to the warranties, both have the typical 3 year 36,000 mile bumper to bumper warranties and 5 year 60,000 mile powertrain ones, but only the Toyota throws in 2 years of complimentary maintenance. Alright, so that's going to be it for the exteriors, which means it's now time to check out the refreshed cabins before we take them out for a spin. So first walking up to the vehicles, both cars include smart entry systems, but only the Accord has remote start on the FOB included free for life. Once we actually reach the interiors, you will see some 2021 changes but not any extreme changes to the designs. Both continue to have pretty stylish looks, and on these examples are finished in all black. As far as the seats themselves, the Accord definitely has the advantage, since its seats are real leather compared to leatherette, it has 12 ways of adjustment compared to 8, and its seats are also heated while the Camrys are not. Once inside, we can talk about the cabin materials, which are good in both. They use soft touch plastic in most of the areas where people will touch, the Camry having leatherette on the middle dashboard and the Accord on the center tunnel. After starting the cars up, you'll find a more traditional gauge setup in the Camry with a 4.2 inch multifunction display, and a more interesting one in the Accord with a 7 inch display. And coming back to the steering wheels, they are both leather wrapped and manual adjusted. Okay, so the next thing to talk about is interior storage. 
Honestly, the two are pretty much neck and neck, both having gigantic center consoles and plenty of storage up front. But the Camry does have an extra USB port and it's the newest Type-C variety. Heading to the shifters, both have the traditional kind and both have paddle shifters on the wheel. However, when you go into reverse, the Camry's backup camera doesn't offer active trajectory or separate angles like the Accords does. The next stop are the climate controls, where the Camry has a single zone automatic setup compared to the dual zone automatic one in the Honda. Alright, so now let's go ahead and sample the standard audio system. While the Toyota system is technically down two speakers, it seems to have the fuller sound and substantially more bass. So with the refresh, the biggest thing Toyota did to the cabin was to make the screen a floating display, like what the Accord has. While visually they now look pretty much the same, if you pay close attention you can tell that the Toyota's is a smaller 7 inch display compared to 8 inches in the Honda. But outside of that, the other features are pretty much the same, with both having Android Auto and Apple CarPlay abilities, as well as reasonably fast performance. And wrapping up the front of the cabin, the Camry has a couple advantages since it includes an auto dimming mirror and power moonroof, neither of which can be had on the Accord Sport SE. Now moving to the rear seats, both are very spacious, but the Accord has a legroom advantage of about 2 inches. Once in the back, amenities are not super abundant, but that's not really expected for the price. The Accord has two USB ports, but only the Camry has one touch automatic windows in the back. Heading around to the trunks, the Accord certainly has the advantage since it offers an unusually large trunk for the class at 16.7 cubic feet. Alrighty, that's it for the interiors, but now let's see just how much ground the Camry can make up from behind the wheel and out on the road. For such close competitors, they both go very different routes as far as the powertrains are concerned. For the Honda, they chose a small displacement 1.5 liter turbo 4 cylinder, making 192 horsepower and 192 pound-feet of torque. Toyota, on the other hand, went the more traditional route with a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated i4. It makes 203 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque. And indeed, it does feel quicker from behind the wheel. acceleration up to about 60 miles an hour with this 2021 Honda Accord. Yeah, it definitely feels fine accelerating off. It's not going to like blow your mind or anything, uh, but definitely has enough power. And it is worth noting that this engine is quite a bit quieter than direct competition like the Toyota Camry. That 1.5 liter turbo is one of the quietest engines you can get. Yeah, it's a tiny motor and it is really, really quiet. I do think that uh, this Camry upon its first acceleration, this is certainly one of the uh, fastest options in the segment, especially for the standard engine because it really is, in power figures, it actually is one of the highest ones and it just feels a lot more spunky than a lot of the competition. That's right, and we just drove the refreshed 2021 Honda Accord about three days ago. And I can definitely say this standard engine compared to that standard engine uh, definitely feels a lot peppier. Um, it just uh, feels more responsive overall. For the transmissions, you pretty much have the same story. Honda went with a CVT, while Toyota went with an 8-speed automatic. 
Most people prefer the feel of a traditional transmission, and it is also more responsive to throttle input changes than the CVT in the Accord. Now part of what makes the powertrain feel more responsive than some of the competition uh, is the fact that if this has an 8-speed automatic transmission versus a continuously variable transmission in many of the rivals. Um, as you can probably tell on that acceleration you just did, um, that does help you have that instant power. You don't have to wait for any type of turbo lag or CBT lag. And then it also is really ready to shift as soon as you put your power foot down and give you more power. So it's, uh, it's a good transmission, this 8-speed yeah. automatic. I also want to mention the fact that the Camry is now available with all-wheel drive, which is something that no Accord can add at this time. As far as the experience driving these two, both are pleasant. They both have very comfortable ride qualities and are pretty much neck and neck. I will say, however, that once the road gets twisty, the Accord is the one with better handling and chassis control, though the Camry is no slouch. And speaking of exciting, kind of going around that corner reminds me, I definitely want to talk about the dynamics behind the Accord. Thankfully, Honda did not mess with this area yeah. because, you know, you can debate which midsize sedan is the best driving, but no matter who you ask, they're definitely going to say the Accord is at the very top of the class. Things are just really impressive on board, really great cornering, it corners really flat, the chassis is super controlled, love the steering as well. It's got, it's lightweight, you know, for everyday living, of course. Um, but super responsive yeah. as you can see. Um, this Honda really just nails the dynamics here on the Accord because like I said it's everyday livable but also it's fun uh, when you kind of go around corners and stuff. Like I said in the past Camry reviews Toyota paid a lot more attention to the dynamics in this generation of the Camry especially since they switched to the TNGA platform um, and really you have just a, a really nice feel behind the wheel. Uh, when you go around corners, the corner is nice and flat. Uh, there's a little bit sportier stuff with the SE as far as your suspension tuning and your steering tuning. Uh, it is nice and fast responding. Toyota fights back with the fact that it has the quieter cabin at highway speed. That's, and I will go ahead and get a sound level reading so we can see how, how quiet it is in here. We're going to take it at 55. So going at 55 miles an hour, we're looking at 57 and a half decibels, uh, which that's very solid. All right, 55. Wow, okay. We're looking at, it was sitting around 54 and a half decibels up before we started slowing down there. And uh, the Accord, like we said, we just tested that a few days ago, that was about 57. So this is quieter at highway speed. However, I will point out this engine is quite a bit louder than the Accord. So when you're accelerating, it does have more noise than the Accord. Uh, but once you get up to highway speed, it's actually quieter. Finally, as far as fuel economy, they are rated identically at 32 mpg combined. But the Camry's larger fuel tank will allow it to have the greater fuel range. So there you have it, that's the end of another competitive race between two heavyweight midsize sedans. Based on comments we have seen from you guys, many people feel strongly that one is better than the other, but as you can see from the scores, they are both excellent choices. Anyway, thanks for joining us for another car confections comparison, and be sure to subscribe if you want to see more comparisons and our signature full review videos. Take care and stay safe.